This is the Music and Mental Health Podcast with Theology and DJ Fat Lane. Hello world, and welcome to the Music and Mental Health Podcast, episode 12. In this episode, DJ Fat Rain and I talk about uncertainty, how to deal with it, the kinds of tactics we use, and what it's like moving forward in this crazy uncertain world. First, I've got about an hour of music for you. Here is After Us with Too Much Time, the extended mix, which is now out on OM. Ugh, love this song. Music and Mental Health Podcast. Man, that was a banger, wasn't it? Stay tuned for even more bangers, which, 
a lot are video game remixes from yours truly this month. But first, we're going to slow it down a little bit. Here's Jeff Osmitz with Black Mass. Enjoy. This is the Music and Mental Health Podcast.
Music and Mental Health Podcast with Theology and DJ Fat Lane. O'Neill featuring Elaine Signoret, I think that's how you say that, uh, with Bad Waters, the original mix. And up next is mine and Player 2's take on Metroid Prime's Crashed Space Pirate Frigate. Enjoy.
Health Podcast.
explosion with the known universe there. That one is a great tune. And before that, we heard Kumu's remix of Luigi's Mansion by Kazumi Totaka. Up next, we're going to play a little bit from the Lido and Can Blaster EP. Here's 6.59 a.m., followed by Alarm Clock. Enjoy. This is the Music and Mental Health Podcast.
Kondo's Rico Harbor there from Super Mario Sunshine, and that's Mind vs. Audio Mocha's Psytrance remix. I actually shared a hotel room with Audio Mocha at VGMCon, and that's how we decided to make this. I'm glad that it's finally come to fruition. And up next is another collab. This is Mine and the Mesmerist collab of Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Doors X Not Fortress. This one is dedicated to you, Josh, from Bonus Stage Man. Enjoy. Music and Mental Health Podcast.
That's my other favorite from the Lido and Can Blaster EP. That's Hyperspeed. And up next, we've got my remix of Whisper and Mantra from Secret of Mana. This is the first dance remix of this in the world. Yeah, I checked. I am the first person to make a remix of this. Enjoy.
Johnson killing it on the vocals right there. That was our remix of Burn My Dread from Persona 3. And up next, let's close it out with a little lo-fi. This is the Bexico lo-fi remix of The Great Sea, which is the best theme from The Legend of Zelda in my humble opinion. You might be hearing a remix from me on this very soon. enjoyed the music hour. 
Up next, we're going to talk about uncertainty and how we deal with it. What up? How's it? What's up, buddy? Oh, chilling. Um, welcome. Straight chilling? Yeah, straight chilling with my Tree Hill okay. jersey. Let's go. I don't want to be. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so welcome back to the Music and Mental Health Podcast. I'm Theology. I'm um, Fat Rain. What up? So. So today, today was sponsored by Plant Daddy. Oh, we're blurred out. There we go. <laughs> sponsored by Plant Daddy. Plant Daddy. <laughs> For when you need a socially acceptable kink that you can tell your <laughs> office mates. And they're blurring it again. <laughs> and they're blurring again. Because I don't think it's so mostly socially, socially acceptable. acceptable but, yeah. but, and they can't sue us because it's just a mug. So we're good. So they don't need to sue us. Yes. It's like the first time that we can fully get away <laughs> with it after what is this? I don't know. Episode. I don't even know. Uh, um, 13. Yeah. 12. Gosh. Um, bro, it's good to see you, though. Um, Again, glad we're back in the swing of things doing the podcast. What do you want to talk about today? So something that's kind of been going around, I think, in my life and also just the world right now is uncertainty. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, just that casual thing. Um, you know, I work, in, I work in the tech sector these days after, you know, getting out of the restaurant industry mm-hmm. where, you know, the restaurant industry, for the most part, you lose a job, you go get another job because it's fairly cross-functional and, you know, you can go anywhere with it. The tech world is going through a pretty uh, crazy space. You know, there's war going on, stock markets not great, crypto markets down, tech sector, like inflation's up, percentage base points is up, and it's forcing, you know, money isn't easy to get now. So there's there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. And what I'd like to talk about is, you know, the cause of the uncertainty and how to live with it. Okay. I'm into so, that because I struggle with that a lot. So, yeah. yeah. So for me, you know, the way that uncertainty manifests is, you know, light stress. Mm-hmm. It's what we're, we're, we're trying to predict the unknown, which by nature you cannot do. So Indeed. how do, how do we sit with that uncertainty? Because the reality is it's always going to be part of our lives. Nothing in life is certain. You can, you know, still the, the old adage of like, oh yeah, you can get hit by a bus tomorrow, or right. get hit by a car, right? It can that happen. could happen. Ha- yes, exactly. happens it happens every day to people. <clears throat> yep. So, how do we live with what's going on in the world? And this kind of goes back into our, what we were talking about in our previous podcast around what we're absorbing every day, right. what we're allowing our bodies to hold on to, because our bodies hold on to things, whether we realize it or not, and they manifest into physical pain anxious anxiety like all of these things that we don't need to hold on to Mm -hmm. we just haven't learned how to deal with it so for you personally how does uncertainty manifest in your life and how do you deal with it wow yeah so let's unpack that um uncertainty manifests itself in I mean, the obvious answer is, well, I don't know the future. I don't know what's going to happen, you know, because anything could. Um, I want to think of a specific example, though, that's happened recently. <clears throat> well, I guess with, um, yeah, let's let's just go financial, right? I'm a big finance guy. I love uh really effectively trying to manage my money as best as I can. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're invested in in the markets, oh my gosh, it's been a bloodbath for the past two years. Yeah. Like, (laughs) well, I mean, not really, not really. Well, a bloodbath thing on which side you're on. Yeah. When they, uh, you know, artificially inflated the money supply, like Ray Mm -hmm. Dalio's principle of the changing world order. Have you seen that video? He talks about whenever a government does that, you know, the stock market's going to go up. That's just what's happened Mm -hmm. historically anyways. But other than that whole thing, we're coming off this bull run and it's, it's like, wow, I've lost like half of my wealth. Yay. (laughs) Um, You know, and inflation is rising and things are getting more expensive and 
you know, my, my job as an independent, like I do contract work for literally everything. Like I don't have really job security if, if you will. Mm -hmm. Right. Because at any moment, you know, and I'm sure you've had to deal with this in the tech uh, industry as well. At any moment, an executive could decide, Oh, we're not making enough profits. Let's do a reduction in force and then Mm -hmm. fire half the staff. Right. Um, But how do we deal with such things like that? Well, it's tough. I mean, we can, we can sit and dwell on it, but that's not really going to, to do anything. Right. So one thing that came to mind when you were, uh, when you were talking earlier was that uh, (laughs) the old adage, you reap what you sow. And if the decisions we're making now are grounded in uh, rationality, I'll just say we can unpack that. Oh my gosh. But sure. if they're rational decisions um, and you genuinely believe in your heart that they're what's best for now and in the future, because everything that you do now is going to affect you in the future at some point. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's a good way to deal with uncertainty. It's like, I'm doing the best I can right now, you know, and because I'm doing the best I can right now, my future is probably going to be okay too, despite the fact that yes, anything could happen. But if I'm doing what's good right now, there's hope that I can be prepared for what's going to happen in the future, even if it's bad and outside of my control. So what I'm hearing is that you're making decisions not grounded and based in fear. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Decisions based in love because the opposite of, fear is love that's just what i I think but you could disagree what do we have power and control over also a good question um i guess that varies for each life you know but the things that we do we have control over i have control over not drinking the rest of my coffee okay I don't have control over I'm on the highway. Somebody swerves, excuse me. Somebody swerves into me, makes my car flip over and it kills me. Right. Um, so with, with that, your yeah. what you are in control of is your reaction to something. Sure. Okay. Yeah. When I was growing up, my mom would say it's all about the, the attitude that we have and how we choose to respond to things rather mm-hmm. than what actually happens. So yes, yes, I'm I'm totally with you there. How we react to a situation, you know, when you're presented with something, when you start doing meditation and going deeper into meditation, mm-hmm. you know, people have this perception that meditation and Buddhist monks, they don't feel anything. Like you, there is there is no thoughts, there's nothing going on, you're just in this blank space it's completely incorrect. Yeah. That's not very human at all. Meditation is about learning how to control your reaction to your thoughts and your feelings and separating out thoughts and feelings. Um, there's one technique, whereas, you know, when you're in a meditative state and you're just thoughts going to come into your brain, no matter what you can't right. stop them. Exactly. But what you can do is say, is this thought, is this a thought or a feeling? And then you, you say, oh, this is a feeling and you imagine it's a feather and it just floats away hmm. and you, you, you basically recognize like it is this or it is this, and then you let it go. And Buddhist monks, they, they feel everything. They just know how to react or control their reaction to it right. and process it in a different way. Because they literally practice that process all the time. Right. And I so, feel like we really don't do that as a society at all. No, not at all. Yeah. So how we react to uncertainty, you know, oh, um, 20% of the workforce just got laid off my job. Uh, Is my job safe? Is it not? And instead of going into this deep fear cycle, you can take a step back and say, I recognize that I'm feeling afraid about my job security right now. What can I do about this from, you know, personally? Maybe that's, you know, it's like, you know, I'm going to put it out there and look for another job, or maybe I'm going to have a conversation with my manager, or, you know, maybe I'm going to brush up my resume or mm-hmm. whatever it is. Try and change your reaction from fear 
to grounding it and saying like, okay, how can I deal with this situation so I don't feel as uncertain and I can bring a little bit more certainty in there. But the reality is there will always be uncertainty. Yeah, no, I like that a lot. Um, as you were talking, I thought of two things. I thought of an example recently that um, I, I, I could share, w- which is how I dealt with uncertainty. And two, I want to know how you specifically deal with it. Um, I, it's probably a little bit of what you've mentioned already, but mm. um, you know, more techniques would be great because obviously I love your, uh, I love your, oh, I, th- I just thought of another one. Okay, who? Let's go. Give it, give it to me. Let's do this. Yeah. So, do you remember back in the days when uh, we back were back in the day? Yeah. When we were doing life coaching sessions together, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maddie had a job in Pennsylvania where her mm-hmm. boss was not great, and she uh, <laughs> she had this opportunity to do the job she's doing now. And do you remember we had a conversation about it? I remember I was pacing in my living room by my couch. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, where I was like, I like Pennsylvania. I don't want to move again. Oh my gosh, this is the worst because we keep moving and moving and moving. Um, Mm -hmm. which by that time it had only been twice, which now seems like nothing in the grand scheme of things. Now you're a veteran. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But, uh, but yeah, I was like pretty against it initially. And, uh, I don't remember like the exact words that you told me, but you really eased me with what you said. I don't know if you remember what you said to me, but you really eased me and uh, got me to calm down a bit and to embrace a new challenge. Yeah, it was uncertain. I had no idea I would be Mm -hmm. getting into like the lifestyle we have now. And it's amazing. Um, But uh, yeah, that really helped me. The second thing is that uh, when we first got to Michigan this year, uh, the house that we... uh, are staying in the internet just horrendous. So the, when I found out, sorry, what going back to 1995. Yeah. Uh, we got here and I tried to do a Twitch stream and it failed <laughs> because uh, the upload speed is not very good here. We're in the country. We're in the middle of nowhere. I think it's cause they can't get cable out here. I think mm-hmm. that's what it was. So they have to do yep. it through like a telephone line and it's just, yeah, it's bad garbage so, yeah so when it first Hot happened <laughs> when it first happened i was like i feel super defeated right now like mm-hmm. what am i gonna do like i need good internet in order to keep the the dj and uh podcast and production all that stuff sustaining mm-hmm. um i did sit there for a little bit like oh this is uncertain af what am i gonna do and then um th- what i did to deal with it was i pivoted um, that's why I started doing the interesting locations, uh, tour mm-hmm. that I'm currently in the process of doing. And it's been super fun. It's something I've always wanted to do ever since you showed me the circle videos on YouTube of oh, people yeah, yeah. being in those weird locations. I'm like, I want to do that. Like I want to travel the world and do that. So, um, yeah, it's something I definitely want to keep going cause it's super, super, super fun. Um, but yeah. Uh, those are two ways that I dealt with uncertainty was pivoting Mm -hmm. and then changing my mindset to embrace, to embrace change, to embrace something Mm -hmm. new coming in, despite the fact that it could be uncertain and it's ended up being awesome. Right. Um, so now getting to the third thing, how do you specifically deal with uncertainty? I mean, there's, there's definitely many ways based upon the situation. Um, you know, when I was, uh, executive chef and a chef and you know work in the line and everything else there's always uncertainty every second so yeah. how how do you deal with that chaos you just have to embrace it and say that i cannot i cannot get away from this but how can i embrace it and harness the energy so kind of what you yeah. were talking about like not having internet Mm-hmm. I view that as a forcing function in a lot of ways. Like, okay, I have this obstacle. I cannot do this. Could I fight somebody to try and get this and it would cost a lot of money? Yeah, potentially. Or can I just say like, okay, this is a limitation that's being placed upon me. What can I do? And what is it with my power creatively or whatever to overcome this mm-hmm. and maybe make it into something that I didn't even know and be better? You know, when it yeah. comes to job security, maybe, you know, when I got out fully from the restaurant industry, 
it was always a easy backup plan for me. I was like, oh, you know, while I'm looking for another job, I'll just do some catering for a while. You know, it'll, just, it'll be fine. And then you kind of fall into this trap. Mm-hmm. When the pandemic hit, it was just like, boom, done. That's it. Over. It was like, so what now? What's 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 next? And it's a forcing function. Yeah, totally. And then you kind of go on a little journey of like, okay, well, what's next? And that fear of the unknown is what stops people because I'm not going to say this is an American only thing, but it's definitely more prevalent in America. Well, you have authority that... to say that because you're British. So. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. I just, um, I know my place. Yep. Fail- failure is not tolerated. Failure is not embraced. It's all yeah. about the win. Right. It's all about being the best. Oh, you didn't lose. You know, here's an award or whatever it is. And the reality is that we need to fail forward. No one ever started something and was good at it. They might be, that they might true. have natural talent. Someone could pick up a guitar and be like, oh, this is great, but they're not going to be a maestro. True. And I mean, so you have to, on that you note, you should fail. listen to some of my first productions. They're awful. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. So yeah. it is the ability to fail forward and embrace the unknown and the uncertain and say, hey, I don't know what's coming, but I have trust in myself that I would be able to navigate it no matter what. Because there is the theory around like nothing that is nothing is put on your plate that you cannot handle. Yeah. I mean, I heard that a lot growing up. A lot. And I mean, I guess like I've overcome every obstacle that's that I faced to this day. Mm -hmm. So. Well, can I say every obstacle? I don't know. But what I am saying is that the ones that I needed to overcome. Yeah, I'm here. I'm thriving. Okay. Uh, Yeah, that's very interesting, man. Um, Yeah, uncertainty sucks, but I don't know. Like I thrive off of change. And so in a way, I get kind of excited about it. In a, in a really weird way, like, okay, before I do a DJ set in front of a lot of people, I, I get this like, you know, nervousness, but like, I've done it so much now that I've tricked my brain into liking that feeling. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just maybe a mindset of like, yes, okay. There's uncertainty, um, in life. There always will be, but maybe we can use this to create something incredible in the long run. And I think that's a really valuable thing. So to wrap up, are there any takeaways that we should uh, be moving forward in life with from this episode? I mean, way to just throw in right into the deep end. (laughs) Um, It's what I do. Embrace uncertainty and have have trust in yourself. Because in the reality is that no one else will. Seriously. Only you can do it for yourself. Right. that, That is the start of a path of, you know, a lot of things go around these days, like, you know, you have to love yourself first before you love others. And yes, that is true. Mm-hmm. But you also have to trust yourself. Yeah, because those are two different things. Yeah. Like, you can still love yourself, but like, hey, I don't know. Yeah, dude, that's huge. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Trust yourself. Believe in yourself. Sing the Arthur theme song if you have to in your head. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're doing a DJ set. Rub, yeah. rub, rub your stomach and pat your head at the same time and don't jump around <laughs> and people are like what's this guy on is he okay he's like no i'm just prepping for my set I'm like uh, uh, uh okay yeah like, I'm that's it yeah. What's gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i love that yeah because i don't know the fear of failure sucks but like um failing upward yeah mm-hmm. okay failing upward embracing uh the uncertainty because it could uh, it could result in something amazing and then believing and trusting in yourself. I love that. Amazing. You, you cannot, you cannot control your past. You can only predict your future. Yeah. But you can't control what's happening in the present. Exactly. Love that. On that note, on my that friend. Note. Yes. <laughs> so good to see you as always. Thank you for your yep. time. And uh, man, get some, get some plant daddy going on in your life. Uh, yeah. Cause <laughs> You might get bored out by Zoom. What up? (laughs) All right, bro. I love you much. I will talk to you soon. See you next month, guys. Oh, um, we're going to have a a guest as well. um, Yeah. Pretty soon here. 
Um, I know we've been saying that for a year, but we're actually like, I have, I have a couple lined up actually. Uh, do you have any lined up, Nathan? It's oh, okay wait, if you don't. The spot. I do yeah, now. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah, he does now. <laughs> it's okay if you don't. I know that there's plenty of people in your circle that we could interview, but we are actually going to have guests sure. soon. Um, we'll be recording an episode here very soon um, that I think you're going to like a lot. So anywho, yep. on that Stay note. Stay tuned, sending questions. Yes. Um, oh, yes. Yes. We have a Discord. We have an email. Music and Mental Health Podcast at Gmail. Uh, links are in the description below. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next month. Peace. See you.